Hi there, this is Nate, and I wanted to take you through a new thing that I've added to Turbo Boost Streams, and this will be coming to the other Turbo Boost libraries in the suite as well. Essentially, it's a way that you can pull this down, work with it, maybe get, get some contributions back to it, but it's also kind of a canonical reference of how to build a simple Docker deployment for a library like Turbo Boost uh, or Turbo Boost Streams here. So in this particular case, I'll just pull you down through the documentation. Uh, I won't really go into what Turbo Boost Streams is. I'll leave that as an exercise for you if you don't know about it yet. However, if you go into this deploying and developing section, all you really need to do to get started here is clone the project and then run Docker Compose up. It's a fully Dockerized development experience. And the Docker file is also used to deploy and this one happens to be a Rails engine. And I'm also doing an additional kind of novel thing here where the test dummy app also serves as the marketing site, the documentation site, the interactive demo site, as well as the, the, the dummy site for the, the integration tests and the whole test suite uh, wrapped up around this thing. So without further ado, let me just show you how this works. So over here, I've already got it uh, cloned. So that step has already been taken care of for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all I need to do here is run Docker Compose up and D for uh, demonize this thing. It will actually bring these things up. If we look at another tab, I can also tail the containers here. And I've got another gem that's in the works that I use for some, uh, some help with some of these things. So I'll just run containers tail. This will actually tail all of the containers that I've got in my configuration. And you can see that it's currently bringing the web container up while that is going. Well, actually, we'll drop in and take a look at the code here in just a minute. It should it should be up and ready to go shortly. It looks like we're pretty much there. We just need to get the health check to pass. So now that that's running on localhost, I can actually switch over here. And if we go to localhost, you'll see that I'm now running the app. And this is the full app. You can drop in and start messing around with some of these turbo streams. And this is actually the test dummy app, but it also incidentally is the app that deploys uh, for the uh, production site here. So if we look at um, where this thing actually deploys, this is the same exact application that we are running out of the Docker container. So kind of cool uh, in that regard, but now that we're running, let's just take a look at some of the files that are here. And uh, the, the main one, uh, the entry point here is our Docker file. But we're also running this locally. So locally means we're going to pick up this Docker Compose. And we run three primary services on Docker Compose. And essentially what that's doing is we've got a web server that runs Rails. We've got an ES build server that actually is monitoring the library code, the JavaScript library code, and rebuilds if we make changes to the library code. And then we've got Tailwind because we're using Tailwind to style up the dummy app, which is kind of a novel, again, a little bit of a novel thing. Um, and then we can start to interact with this thing as well. So this, remember, we were just looking at the logs here. Uh, with my containers gem, I can actually drop in and do all sorts of stuff here. So if I just run containers rake, um, this will essentially run. Uh, it, it shows you what it's doing here, but it actually kind of uh, takes that syntactic sugar on the on the um, CLI there and will translate it down into um, some more verbose Docker commands for us. And you notice that I'm I didn't even really have to specify what Docker service or container it was actually targeting there. And that's because I've got a configuration that runs with the containers gym that tells me what the, the actual default um, container or service is that I want to run things on. But I can also do things like uh, containers tail, and then I can give it a service. And in this case, the service corresponds to one of these service names in the Docker compose file, uh, such as web, ES build, or tailwind. So for example, if we wanted to tail uh, like the ES build and just see what's happening inside of there, we can run we can run that and we can actually see what's happening inside of that. But if we don't specify one containers tail, we'll actually tail all of them. But I can also do things like uh, containers bash, and this will actually just drop me into the default um, 
container, which is web. I can also be really explicit about that if I wanted to run a uh, bash on one of the other ones. So I could say, let's do this one on the ES build service. And that'll actually just run bash and put us into the ES build container. You can actually see that too if we look at the uh, Docker PS uh, to see the containers that are running. And there you go. I've got these Turbo Boost containers that are actually operating. So pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. And outside of that, oh, and that, that same Docker file actually deploys. So this one is corresponding with a fly configuration. Here's the fly configuration. And it does a few different things. Uh, one last little detail here uh, that you can use as a kind of a reference point is in the bin directory, I've got uh, this Docker run and it runs local or remote. Remote is for the remote deployment and local is for the local deployment. So we do a few things here. We set up things like uh, uh, JE Malik and a few other things. We, we do some sim links because we're there, we've got these external volumes that we mount. So the dependencies like uh, bundle and, and node modules actually are persistent between bringing the containers up and down. Same is also true of the remote deployment. We do something similar there, but you can actually see we actually switch into the test dummy app and then spawn the, the test dummy app. And then to see that deployment go, all I do is just run fly uh, deploy after all that configuration and the same configuration goes. So we're actually doing a production deployment right here. Anyway, that's it. I uh, wanted to show you guys. I would love for you to kick the tires with it, pull the project down. No excuse to not make contributions now. You'll see this pattern uh, emerge in all of the Turbo Boost libraries going forward. So keep an eye peeled. Um, anyway, hope you have fun with it. Thank you very much for watching.